These are kind of fun to do because they're just real simple carving. Yeah, I'm just kind of watching as you're breaking these shapes up. There was a guy, I don't remember who it was anymore. I mean, Mom's shop, she had the antique shop there, and I had my carving shop set up in the back of it, in the back room there for a car. And he brought in a crucifixion that was the simplest thing I'd ever seen, and it was so nice. I mean, whoever carved that was a master carving thing. I mean, just, you know, laying out the shapes and things. It just was perfect. And it was so nice, and I, I wanted to get it in my hands long enough to copy it, make me a copy of it, and I never did. He wouldn't leave it with me. And it was just about that really? big, yeah. It was so nice. It had just been done with a knife. But it was done by somebody that just really knew how to carve, you know. It was just, how old, you figure? Oh, I don't think terribly. You know, I don't know. It, it didn't strike me as a new item. That's probably not too far off. No, I think you're in there. So what goes through your mind as you're translating this from that horn to just I mean you're really working it, it at this stage here you're really working planal shapes. So you're really just trying to get the major facets of the carving established, is how I look at it. Because you're, uh, you're way out there on, you know, you're not near any detail yet. So you're just trying to get it all set up. And so like by doing that, cutting that bevel there, I set the angle of that arm, hmm. the bend in that arm. Okay. And then I'll go back in and refine that later. But right now, just doing that gives me how that arm's going to kind of lay there. And the problem when you're knife carving as opposed to chisel carving is you don't have the luxury of being able to do both sides the same way. Because you just run into yourself all the time. And I just start kind of, you know, just defining it. That's all I'm doing right now. Just cutting off the stuff that I really, right now, really know comes off. It's kind of what I'm doing. The obvious is what I'm after right now. I'm not getting into it very deep just yet. This is air dried basswood. Mm -hmm. Totally different material than kiln dried basswood. Totally How so? different. Hmm? How so? Uh, it's much softer and it's much, uh, much less brash. It doesn't want to split or splinter near as much. It's just so much easier to work with, especially when you're just knife carving. It's just totally different material. It's you feel it in your knife how smooth it is to cut in comparison to kiln dried basswood. Hmm. It's really weird. I'll I'll give you a piece of each. Yeah. And you'll you'll be amazed. I'd forgot I hadn't had any air dried for a while, and I thought you know I started in the first piece of this. I thought wow that's nice. It's creamy. Like it's creamy.
and you don't need a whole lot of strength here so I can take these legs down a little bit and kind of get this coat established is what I'm doing and I don't have to worry about it it's not gonna break it's not that fragile because our grains run vertical so we're plenty strong and again just kind of going back to establish that arm By coming in here and taking this off, then you can kind of see that we have, a, have the arm kind of yeah. established there. Haven't really done much, but... You're establishing those planes. Yeah. Yeah, you're just... We want to leave a little bit for his... What is that called? Um, his kerchief or uh, something. They call that something. Cravat. Cravat. There you go. Kind of turn back just a little bit. He kind of had a nice curve to him in there. Biggest thing you have to watch when you're doing this stuff is the tip of that knife where it is. Make sure I'm not undercutting that up there. Mm -hmm. Make sure you're not undercutting your finger. Right. That's what I find myself doing when I'm using. What you'll do is you'll you'll reach across and nick yourself yep. right in here. Is what typically happens. Yeah. I've paying a lot of attention. I've pulled my thumb up where the skin's real thick and I can just see lines where it's not oh, in yeah, any blood. Oh yeah, especially if you're doing like this and hitting. Yeah. And what'll happen is, is you'll be working here, but you'll hit right there yep. and you'll cut yourself. Because these things are so sharp that they, they don't have any trouble cutting you. There's just, there's no problems at all there cutting that skin right there. That's why I'm real careful when I'm doing stop cuts and things is I want to I want to kind of have all that established so I've got a real good stop in there to catch that knife because that thing will go right in you not mind at all His hat was, was it tipped forward or tipped back? Tipped forward? It was tipped forward. I was thinking. Got to kind of establish a hat line on here. Kind of get how it sits on his head established. We're not going to get a lot of forward tilt. I can take that up maybe a little more in the back. Once we get kind of how it's sitting on his head, then we'll we'll get into it further. Oh man, I really see it now, yeah. And once we get that hat kind of established, then we can start establishing his head and his face. And And that's kind of the key to that is is just establishing everything kind of just this way in this plane in this plane and getting everything kind of the way you want it and then you can go back and then blend the two together start rounding things up but 
just kind of the key is just kind of working around things slowly. You get ahead of yourself and you don't have anything. You, can't, you don't want to move too fast. Like I said, I haven't done this particular figure before, so I'm kind of kind of working it to get what I want. I don't want to cut something off I need. So I'm kind of reluctant to get in too big of a hurry. Got more face out there than I need. That's fine. Pull that off. One thing I always do wrong is like this here where I cut in there with the saw. Got his face a little narrower than I'd like it. I shouldn't have my pattern quite that narrow right there. It may end up looking okay, but it kind of leaves you a dead end you got to work into there. And when you're knife carving, that, those dead ends are kind of hard to do. When you're like, have a chisel, you get a lot better shot at going up in there and fixing that. When all he has your knife, you just do a little more limited. And see, I've got his collar wider on one side than I do on the other. I have to move that out a little bit. It's going to be a little bit tricky. saw cutting there is going to be a problem. Cut my, made myself into a dead end it's hard to get out of. You got to design a carving so you don't dead end yourself. If you get a dead end going, you got a problem. Okay. So, I don't know how. I want to do his hair quite. And you never want to spend too much time on one side. You always want to be working that whole thing. Or you'll mess up. You'll take too much off. Because like trying to get that narrower, if I take all my narrow off that one side, then I've created a problem for myself. Right.
as good a way to end that as any. But just something as simple as that, going in there and undercutting that, then you get a nice shadow area there. Makes the carving look much more detailed than the carving really is. And see, he had that. So he kind of had a little bit of a curl at the end. Yeah, well, a little, yeah, a little bit of a ball or something there at the end of his hair and to establish that you just take that tip and go in there and cut that and then and you it's, it's kind of like watercolor in a sense is you don't want to overwork that little space. You want to get in there, get it cut, get it established, get his collar going in there, nice clean cuts. You don't want it to be furry, anything. You want you want it to be nice and clean. And that way it looks nice. If you see how that's just kind of clean there. You say, oh, I need to do this or that, and you'll just mess it up. About guarantee you'll just mess it up. Just in a sense like watercolor, the fewer the cuts, the better off you are. Fewer the brush strokes, the better off you are. knife gets furry and then I can't tell quite where I'm at. What knife is that that you're using? Just my little carving knife I made. It's more a blade and more a laminated steel blade which is a really nice blade. It's really thin, short and uh, it just allows you to get into places. Everybody thinks they want a bigger carving knife. I need a longer blade. No, you don't. All you're going to do with a longer blade is cut yourself more. Because your tip's going to be farther out than you're thinking your tip is. Or you're going to get your thumb up on the bottom end of the blade. You're going to do one or the other to yourself with a longer blade. And you just, you don't need it. And you're just going to make things worse for yourself. I mean, I don't know if it's exactly what I'm after, but it's not too bad. We're going to move along, and then we'll figure out if it's what we want or not. See that pulling in? That's that grain. The grain's running in on this back side here. Got to pay attention to what I'm doing. I'll put myself in trouble. Right there, stuff like that for that little short blade is so handy. You can just come in there and make that cut. And if you had a big long knife, you're you're out too far. You, you don't have the control that you want. To come in there and do that. You want to be right up there. If that blade was any longer, I'd be out on it too far. Just wouldn't be good. 
I don't care whose knife you use, it's just you need a short knife. Everybody I show them the knife, oh it's too short. Well, go ahead and cut your fingers, I don't care. Not my finger. If you really want control, you gotta be close to that knife where it's working. And to be there, you need that little short blade. If this grain was running the other way, I'd be able to go up like I'd like to, but I can't. See, he's got nice, cut that out, separate that arm off, get good definition there. It's like any other kind of art, you're just lying to people the whole time, so you gotta, gotta make them think they're seeing something that's not really there. Ideally, that's like chip carving. You want to get those cuts deep enough to start with that you never have to go back. I didn't quite make it there, but he's got his big cuffs on his coat. And establish that. And again, you just you got to keep in mind what you're shooting for. What are you shooting for? Well, I'm kind of a, I don't know, not a super skinny guy. And so, um, a little thinner than he currently is. So I got to get my arm cut in here so that it works. And ideally, you make that cut deeper than you need it. Because then you can just, that wood will just peel off. And you get that nice clean line. I'm always interested in a nice clean line. Yeah. 
and you know it'd be good to probably go back and work that handle on the other side a little and kind of get them both together but I kind of know where I'm going with them so it's not a big deal to get the one pretty well buttoned up before I get to the other one what I'm kind of establishing there is how this coat's going to run okay so I'm kind of kind of creating that facet where that collar is going to kind of come down and that ridge I don't know what that's called there on that coat but that piece is going to come down this coat's going to kind of open up I think it's the facing the facing there on the coat and so we're going to make that nice Yeah, I shouldn't have went back in there because I'm trying to get furry. You don't want furry. Never want furry. So now these cuffs are kind of wide. You get all the main pieces established. And then you can kind of go back and say if you wanted to put, you know, ribbing on those cuffs or whatever. You go back and do all that if you want to. But the priority is to get everything established. What you do at the end is how far you want to take it. But you got to get everything where it belongs first. Okay, go over here and kind of get this guy. Come our way a little bit. Again, that's why I don't want a really long knife. You want to be able to go in there and have your hand that's guiding the knife real close to the tip that's doing the cutting. So that you don't have something trying to run away from you the whole time.
Okay, so now we got to pull that down in there. Okay, then this coat, as I recall, kind of has a that border on it here. Can I go back? Put that in. And this little carving's got a little more going on than most little carvings would have. So I'm making it kind of fancy. Like I said, once you've got all this stuff established, then you can go put those details in. Too many people want to go start putting details in before anything's established. That's where you really get into trouble. And you end up doing the detail two or three times because you cut it off because you didn't have everything established yet. Or if you just wait until everything's good, then you can just go back and put it in one shot and you kind of get it and you got what you want. And I think they have a little notch in their collar up here. Mm-hmm. Again, it's just those little tiny details like that that completely change the composure of the carving. And then his waistcoat inside of this is probably shorter, isn't it? Yes, it would be. So and you could probably do a little triangle at the center with a, a point going up. Right, where it's buttoned. Yeah. So we've got to kind of be careful here. Because the last thing we want to do is push that knife through that side over there. We kind of want to establish that. And that really short little knife just allows me to go in here. So two things there take away from that is don't get carried away when you're establishing the bottom of that main coat and get a real deep cut line in there that you got to go clean up when you put the west cut in there. See I didn't have to take much out and I'm clean. So then we're going to take this.
Now, I'm not going to go down to the level of buttons on this. You can indicate buttons with paint. It'd be easier than trying to carve them on something this small. You could, but it'd just be time consuming. I don't think any, anybody's going to want to pay for that. So there we go. We left enough material there to get three layers of clothing shown. We got his coat, his waistcoat, and his pants. Everything's good there. And a lot of times, you just got to make two or three, four or something, figure out the best way to do it. I mean, I might make the hat this way, and when I'm done, say, I don't really like that. The next time, do a totally different hat. How to do my tricorn. Yeah, carving a miniature tricorn is not really something that you just kind of go out and do. <laughs> Right the first time, probably. Right. You kind of got to accept that. Yeah. And you always got to be conscious of how deep that tip's cutting. You cut right through the back of that hat. Then you won't have a hat. Should have left my points sticking out more. That old hindsight's always twenty twenty. So I just put those lines on there because you only get to cut once. I 
lines do I try to put a little curve in that brow line And I'm not really putting much in the way of facial features on these. I'm just kind of keeping them plain and simple. And you go as far with it as you want, but again, it's more work. And again, just nice stop cuts so that you're Details are nice and sharp. A little sliver there I want to get out of there. There we go. Then, let's take it and cut right here. Cut right here. Then you can kind of come in there. Careful, trying to take the corner of the nose off. It's just a little long. It's just a matter of kind of keeping everything really nice and clean. A little stringer in there. I haven't even been putting mouth on these. I've just been kind of leaving them the way they are. I mean, I guess the guy could probably. I don't think you have to. No, I don't either. Just reduce that brow line just a little bit. Make him look a little less grumpy. And I think we kind of want a definition line between him and his powdered wig here. I think it'd be kind of cool to do a, I don't know if you could call it a series or not, of videos, but just doing videos just on like knife carving, just the things you can actually do with just one tool. Yeah. Because too many people get too caught up in that tool race. You just want to be really careful on that down cut that you don't just pop that off of there. The slightest amount, too much pressure, and it's gone. It's gone. And finding it on my chippy floor may or may not be possible. Kind of want to work yourself into it, not get carried away, forcing your way into it. there could be clean. 
cleaned up a little bit more. Okay. So he's got to do kind of the legs and the feet a little bit. It's not perfect, but it's not too bad. That's what I normally do. It's just go in here and put a line in there. like everything else it's sharp tools well, if you cut yourself it won't hurt as much either <laughs> half time I never even feel it hardly Oh, I bet I just cut myself. You know, it's kind of a funny feeling. Pretty soon you start leaking. I don't know, I think that's about a wrap, isn't it? I think so. Looks good. Here, let me get that shaving off there. 